Okay. So um, tonight's message is going to be on discerning of spirits. And um, I think it's a real important subject. I mean, everything from the Word of God is important. But uh, we have to, in the body of Christ, we have to discern. And um, we have to know what spirit we're dealing with, right? And it's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit for all of us. And um, so I wanted uh, also, um, you know, a lot of times we use the word discernment, and then we use the word discern discerning of spirit. So we're going to talk about that, the difference there. And, um, you know, we're just going to get into it. So I just want to encourage you all tonight um, to just have an open heart to receive. I'm sure many of you already flow in this, but we're going to talk about how to develop it in an even greater way tonight, Okay. So, Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to minister. I thank you, Father, for your word, that it's rich, it's alive, it's powerful. And, Lord, I thank you that, that it is your desire that, that we hear and see and understand in the realm of the Spirit in a greater dimension than we ever have before. So, Lord, I just thank you for your words that will come forth tonight, and it will minister to each and every one who's listening. In Jesus' name, amen. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, talks about the gifts of the Spirit, okay? And it says here, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge, the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit to gifts of healing, uh, to another the working of miracles, another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, and then different kinds of tongues, and then interpretation of tongues, all right? And so I spoke last week and... and um, Kenneth Hagin broke it down, and, and so what he did was he had the revelation gifts, which would be words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and discerning of spirits, and that's what we're going to really be focusing on tonight. But, and you know, as the body, as Christians, we're all called to flow and to have revelation, and, and, that, and the more we spend time with the Lord, the more that we re meditate upon the word, the more these gifts get developed. So we have the revelation gifts, we have the power gifts, which are faith, gifts of healing and working of miracles. And then we have, the, the, he called it the speaking gifts, and uh, that's speaking in tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. All right? So now, discerning in spirits is the supernatural ability to discern in the spirit realm. In Hebrews 5, 14, it talks about um, us learning to discern uh, and to practice the gift, and I'll read it in a little bit, but to practice the gift to learn bet between, to discern between good and evil. So you can discern in the spirit realm in the, for the demonic, but also for the angelic and, and the motives of an individual's heart. And so that's really important that we exercise this gift and we really learn how to operate in this because we're all supposed to do it. And, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of times that uh, people get over on people. And, and, you know, the Lord wants us to be keen in the realm of the spirit and to recognize what we're dealing with. Now, I'm going to interchange the word discerning of spirits and discernment. So when you see, when you hear me say discernment, what discernment is, is uh, it, it, it can, you can discern various situations. You don't have to be even saved to have discernment. When I was growing up, my mom um, had keen discernment, and she, she didn't know. We weren't, we weren't Christians, and she's from Italy, and... You know, she would say, oh, I don't know, I think I'm a witch. I don't know, you know, I, I have an ESP. <laughs> but we didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know the Bible. So, of course, we naturally, you know, the, the, the occult makes itself very well known, right? Reading astrology and, and all that kind of stuff, which we know in Deuteronomy, I think it's Deuteronomy 18, it says that it's an abomination to the Lord, okay? See, the, the enemy always counterfeits what the Lord has for us. And so discernment, uh, it, you can call it intuition. But you, what happens is as you, the more time you spend with the Lord, the more intimate you are with the Lord, the more you discern and you hear and, and you recognize what's going on. Discerning of spirits is recognizing what's happening in the realm of the spirit. You got it? You got it? Okay. So, okay. All right. So one of the examples here is a lot of times... What we do is we, we just look at what's happening in the natural realm, right? We discern by who looks good, who sounds good, what smells good. It, it, you know, the person's articulate. It seems like they know the Bible. But a lot of times we're discerning with our human spirit. We're not discerning 
you know, with the word of God or not, not the word of God. We're not discerning with the spirit. And an example of that is in 1 Samuel 16, 6 through 7. And this is when Samuel was told to anoint uh, a king, to go and anoint them, pour oil on her head. And he went to the family, went to Jesse's family, and he saw Eliabob. I don't know how to say his name. Whatever his name is, Eliabob. I can't pronounce these names. And so, so it starts out in verse 6, and it says, So it was when they came that he looked at Eli, Eliabob. <laughs> and surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. So he sees this guy, he's probably, you know, like six foot three, totally buff, really good looking guy, real charismatic. And, you know, that's what he's going by. He's not going by what the spirit of the Lord is telling him. And I'm sure he was able to pronounce his name better than I am. But it says, and so Samuel was ready. He had his flask and he was ready to pour oil on his head. And then what happened was in verse 7, it says, The Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature. He says, Because I have refused him. See, the Lord discerned his heart. And it said, But the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. How many of you know the scripture in Jeremiah 17, 9, where it says, The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. He's talking about your heart. He's talking about my heart. Because a lot of times we don't know what's happening in our heart. And so, you know, this guy, Eliab, whatever his name is, I'm sure he was going to church 15 times a week. I'm sure he was doing his thing. But his heart was off. His heart wasn't pure before the Lord. And the Lord's not looking for perfection. But what he does want from us is, is a surrendered heart, a pure heart before him, okay? We're not going to get it all right. But, but, you know, there's, there was a lot of pride because when you read through the portions of Scripture, he was the one that got really aggravated when David went and brought the bread, when David went and brought him, you know, the cheese. And he, and he was also challenging them, like, why are you letting this uncircumcised Philistine challenge all of you? And, and, and so, you know, his brother really manifested, and there was a lot of pride there. So Samuel looked at the outward appearance, and he was discerning based on his appearance, on his physique, and he articulate, how articulate he was. And, and so, you know, the Lord said to him, no. And this, is prof this was the prophet Samuel who went there, who got it wrong. So we can all get it wrong just because we could be saved a gazillion years. And, you know, we've done so many things, and we've prophesied, and, you know, we've flown in deliverance, and we've done a lot of amazing things. doesn't mean you'll miss it. And that's why we have to have a hearing ear and all Always ask Holy Spirit, is this the one? Is this how, you know, how do we handle these things, okay? So in 1 John 4, 1 through 3, it says that we need to test the spirits. So in uh, the Amplified Version, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Instead, test the spirit to see whether they're from God. Because many false prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. But this you know and recognize the spirit of God that every spirit that acknowledges and confesses that Jesus Christ has actually come in the flesh is from God. All right, so here's the thing. We have to, um, we have to discern and we have to test the spirits. One time I was uh, at a meeting, and this particular meeting, leaders invited this girl to this meeting. And uh, I was sitting next to her, and I just had a check in my spirit. But I was a little concerned. You know, I thought, I'm surely, I'm wrong, because these people that were sitting across from me at this table, they were, they were strong leaders in the Lord. And I thought, what is my problem that I just, something about this girl's getting on my nerves, right? So we're talking, one thing led to another, and um, I just felt like she was a witch. And I'm thinking, oh, great. Here are these people, invite her. She's, she's a guest, and I'm thinking she's a witch. So one thing, as we continue talking, uh, what came out was uh, she actually said, I don't know what I, I don't I, I did mention something about witchcraft, and she says, oh, yes, I used to be involved in witchcraft. She said, but, she said, um, but now, you know, we, we wreaked so much havoc in churches because we would go in churches and cause a disruption and pretend we're one of them. And, and she said, but now um, I'm reformed. And she said, and now I want to go into the churches and help bring restoration. So I'm thinking, she is lying through her teeth. I didn't believe one word she said. And I'm like, really? And she said to me, yeah, and I'd like to come to your church. And I said, yeah, don't worry about it. I have my church under control. I don't need you coming. And so the more we discussed what was happening, it turned out she was a witch. 
She was there to find out where these leaders were to infiltrate their churches and to cause a problem. And that's the thing. A lot of times in churches, people don't have discernment. Just because someone's coming to church, just because they speak in, in a tongue, doesn't mean it's tongues, tongues, God's tongues, because the devil has demonic tongues. And just because they're clapping their hand and worshiping doesn't mean they're of God. Because we've had many a time people have come in to cause a lot of problems. And so we have watchmen that are watching that we're aligned with in the church. And we watch and we discern. Now, that, now, see, now I am going to talk about there's a fine line about being really judgmental. Because you don't want to, you know, be nasty or mean to the individual. Because you always want to give the person an opportunity to make, to get right, right? And what if that were you? And so, but we need to have discernment. Look at what's happening in the world right now how people are buying into a lot of stuff. Just because somebody says something, you need to research it, search it out, discern what's happening, and then ask Holy Spirit. See, that's the beauty of it. We all, if you're born again, you have the Spirit of God in you. He's the Spirit of truth, and he'll help develop that gift within you. See, you have to exercise it. You have to practice it. And um, so uh, the gift of discerning of spirits is just not exclusive to people, but it's to cultures, you know, you recognize the, the, you know, the certain cult, the spirits and cultures, right, and, and, and just even traditional things. And so just because you've done something a certain way forever doesn't mean it's right. Just because your culture has done something a certain way doesn't mean it's right. And that's where, again, we have to go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I don't want to be out of your will. I want to do things according to your will. I don't want to do anything that's going to hinder me. And so a lot of times we're not doing that. So the gift of discerning of spirit searches the motives of the heart. Now, I didn't call you to ask you to be Judge Wapner. You know, so again, I'm going to talk about that, about judging, you know, how you have to be careful not to judge hearts. But, but the Lord does want us to be keen in this area. Now, the demonic releases false mindsets. There's emotional strongholds. And, and, and his goal is to ensnare people. And his goal is to call, keep people in captivity and bondage. But see, the Holy Spirit wants to shine the light on root issues. And again, it's done in love. It's not done in a way where, where you're, you're, you're talking against people or shaming people or harassing people. That's not, that's not our heart. That's not the heart of the Lord. But the Lord challenged people, and he called them out. And so, again, in the church, we have to recognize the spirit of truth. We have to recognize and have discernment and discerning of spirits and recognize what's coming in the church. Not every song, not everything that we hear is of God. And, again, you know, sometimes you can hear something or, you know, you're talking with someone, and when you get that, that check, we have to discern if we, it's coming from a wounded heart or if it's from a heart that's that's we're pure and that the holy spirit is telling you something is off all right i don't want to get ahead of myself because i'm going to explain that a little more all right so um anyway so in john 16 13 it says when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth full and complete truth for he will not speak on his own initiative but he will speak whatever he hears from the father the message regarding the son and he will disclose to you what is to come, all right? Now, one of the things that I, I've heard many people say, and this is, again, where we, what we have to be careful. Now, let's say we're in a church setting, okay? And, um, or let's say you're in your business and you're discerning something. Now, what is wise to do, the Bible says, uh, first of all, uh, in a multitude of counsel, there's safety. So what's wise is to just, you know, dialogue with somebody and process what you're sensing. Because, again, you have to be careful. And, you know, when I was starting to really learn and develop in this, and I still do this to this day, I, I'll ask the Lord, Lord, is this my heart? Is there an issue in my heart? Uh, let's say I'm discerning something with uh, an individual. Is it something in my heart where there could be an issue? Or am I accurately discerning? And then from there, I'll go to, you know, a colleague or, or a leader, and I'll ask, and I'll say, you know, I'm just discerning this. Are you sensing this, right? Because, again, God looks at the whole picture, and the Lord wants everybody healed. So, you, you know, you don't want to just call the person out and, and shame them and call them out in front of people. That would not be the spirit of the Lord. But I would get counsel, and not just, well, God told me, and I'm doing it. That's wrong. That's a wrong attitude, and that's a wrong spirit. 
and it's, I, you know, okay, Lord, I just want to hear from your heart, and then I want to address and, and confront the situation, okay? There's a way of going about it, because listen, the Lord died on the cross for that individual, right? Let's say that person that you're discerning something from, and, um, you know, and he wants them healed. You know, I had a situation a long time ago where I, I had to deal with somebody, and this person really had it down. They were articulate, they, they knew the Bible, and they, they had speaking engagements, and every time I was around this person, I had such a check in my spirit, and I kept questioning myself. I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody, if that happened to anybody here, and I'm thinking, what is my problem? And the Lord the whole time is trying to tell me, be careful, watch out for this individual. And so I just, I second-guessed myself, you know, I was intimidated, you know, I thought, oh my gosh, this person's so polished. And uh, I was looking, like Samuel, I was looking at the outward, not discerning the heart of the matter because I got intimidated, right? Well, long story short, this person caused so much problems, but I've learned to discern. I've learned to address the situation. I, I said, Lord, as long as, <laughs> as long as I can, I'm never going to allow myself to go through that again. And it was a long process, but I just, I, it, because I needed healing, I needed healing because of insecurity and, and inferiority, just, just not having confidence in me and in that God was speaking to me, and I had to get healed from that. And then as the Lord started to really deal with me and, and you know, I got ministry and got healing, then it, it's really started to shift. So that's really, really important because a lot of times it's not going to be that someone's going to come with a red fork, you know, and red outfit on with, you know, horns on his head. It's going to be someone that's close or something that you're familiar familiar to or some you know that 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 individual that that you think could be an amazing individual just like Samuel again he was a prophet he was told by the Lord to go and and pour the oil on and commission uh, you know the king and he got it wrong so that's why again we have to hear the voice of the Lord but we have to also have connection we have to submit to our leadership and have ask them to help us if you have safe leadership okay so let's look at this in Acts chapter uh, 16. Um, this is when Peter and, um, you know, Peter was on his way to um, pray. And so um, it says here, I'm sorry, not Peter, Paul. It says, it happened that as they were on their way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. That is a demonic spirit, what time is it? A demonic spirit claiming to foretell the future and discover hidden knowledge. And she brought her owners a good prophet. She was fortune telling. And she followed after Paul and us and kept screaming and shouting, These men are servants of the Most High. They're proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She's doing this for, she was doing this for several days. And Paul, being greatly annoyed and worn out, turned and said to the spirit inside her, I command you in Jesus' name as a representative of his to come out of her, and it came out that very moment. Now, I remember when I first got saved reading that, and I thought, why in the world was he getting so mad at? She was calling him a man of God, right? And so, but he discerned the spirit. She was operating from a spirit that would bring people into idolatry, that bring people into an error. And so he discerned the spirit. Here she's fortune telling. That was one of the ways they raised money in the community. But that was, he discerned it. And so that's the thing with us. I mean, we can have people come to church, praise God, and say all these amazing things, and they're operating from a spirit of witchcraft. And that happens. A religious spirit in a church, that happens. And so we have to discern that. And again, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth will show us. But then again, you know, and, and I'll talk about that in a minute, how we deal with it is very important. How we deal with it. We can be in a food store. We can be out and about wherever we are. And, and you discern that thing. You can see it on a person. And the more, pers the more you deal with this, the more you do this, you can recognize it on a person's face. And I'll get into that in a minute. But... Um, but the Lord really wants us to discern more than ever. Because what does the Bible say? That he says in last days, you know, people will be deceived. And there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of spirit of fear going on. And so God, the Bible says that God has not given us in 1 Timothy a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. And the Lord wants us to get free from a spirit of fear. Listen, we can make all the excuses we want, but like I said last week, we all know if we're operating in fear. I know when I'm in fear. And so that's something that we don't just settle with it. We have to address it. 
Because and God, he loves us too much to let us stay where we're at. So in dealing with, you know, when, when, with discerning of spirits in Philippians 1, 9 through 11, it says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of man. This is really important for anything, really, in, that we're operating in. But to operate, we operate from a place of love and compassion, not, not criticism and judgmental, you know, being real judgmental and, and suspicious with an individual. The, the goal is for that person to get healed. The goal is for your situation to get restored. We always want to come at it from a heart of love and compassion, not that you're rolling over and playing dead, but what, how would Jesus handle it? He, he always operated. He spoke truth, and he didn't back down, but he always spoke in love and compassion, Right? So that's what we have to really be careful of. So love has to be that underlying motive. I'm, I'm, now we're starting to come down to a close here. In Matthew 7, 1 through 4, in the Passion, we teach us a lot about judgments. But listen to how it's worded here. It says, Refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others, and you will not be judged. For you'll be judged by the same standard that you've used to judge others. It's so true. And it says in the measurement... You use to judge others will be used on you. Why would you focus on a flaw in someone else's life and fail to notice the glaring flaws of your own? How could you say to your friend, Let me show you where you're wrong and you're guilty of even more? So Jesus is identifying a wrong motive here. So when we're ministering to an individual or wherever we're at, you know, we have to understand am I being critical? Am I being harsh with that individual? Um, and, and, you know, you want to come at it from a place, listen, here's what I'm sensing. And, and you want to always speak the truth in love. All right? It's really, really important. And so that word judge there means it, the, 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 um, the Greek word is krino or krino, and it's, it means to make a decision about, to evaluate, or to condemn. We don't ever want to condemn. We don't ever want to have a self-righteous attitude where we look down on the others like, you know, have that kind of an attitude. That's, that stinks. That's a religious spirit. Always put yourself in a person's place. What if that were you? How would you want to be treated? And, we're, you know, God didn't call us to, find, uh, to, to be fault-finding. He called us to have discernment, to have discerning of spirits, and to recognize the spirit, to recognize what's at hand. And the thing is, you want to see this situation through the eyes of the Lord, but you also want to recognize what it is. And so you don't want to be so suspicious and, or, or really critical. In the beginning... If I would see something, this, I, like, I guess this righteous indignation it would rise up. But then a lot of times I would just look at the person with contempt, you know, think like you, you know. And the Lord had, a rep he had to deal with me because I was, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know how to handle it. I knew what I was sensing. I knew what I was seeing. But I was getting critical. And so the Lord, you know, had to really help me with that. And you see, the other thing is, that's why we all need inner healing. And we all need to go through some type of deliverance. I, I, I spoke something earlier. I mean, I have my own spring cleaning I go through because none of us have arrived. And, and we, you know, you've heard of blind spots. And if you have a blind spot, that means you don't see it. And so I, I, just, I just like to get healed. I, I just like freedom. And so we just have to make sure that we're not ministering out of your uh, wounded spear because what happens is we, 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 we become presumptuous or else like if we have unforgiveness or hurt that we haven't addressed we see through that lens and so that again we always have to be careful that's why I always like to run things by people and I'll just say all right look here's what I'm having a problem with just tell me I mean and sometimes just talking about it is helpful and that 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 you know so that God can identify if I have unforgiveness, if I have bitterness, if I have resentment, or if there's pride there. It happens to us all. None of us arrive. I don't care how long you're saved. I don't care if you're a prophet for twenty eight thousand years. I don't care. It's so easy for our heart to become hardened. It's so easy for us to get off track, to veer off track. And that's why we want the Holy Spirit to shine his light on our hearts because it can happen to any one of us. 
And so, um, you know, we have to be very careful. And in Second Corinthians 2, it says that we have to keep Satan, or to be aware, to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. He knows the buttons to push. He knows the buttons to push with you, David. He knows the buttons to push with me. He's not going to bother me with something that would bother David. He's going to bother me and get me with something that would bother me. And so, again, the beauty of it is we have Holy Spirit in us. So the Holy Spirit in us will help us. It's not like we're on our own. And that's, that's the thing that I love, that the Holy Spirit, you know, wants us to, to recognize and, and identify root issues. You know, he doesn't want us to hide. He doesn't want us to isolate. This thing with isolation was the biggest plan of the enemy. And so and the other thing that the enemy does, he loves to deceive us. He deceives. He, that's his biggest tool is deception. And I'll tell you, a lot of people don't know the word, and that's why they're deceived. And every one of us, listen, the devil's game plan is for you not to know the word. If you were working at a job, and, and, the, and they said to you, you have all these amazing benefits, are you not going to read your book, your benefits, about your benefits? Well, here's the spirit of the Lord saying, I have all these miracles. I have, I have peace for you. I have joy. I have pens that are dropping. I have, I have all these amazing things that, that I can do, that I want to do, that I want to bring healing and restoration in your life, and we don't read the book. Well, I don't like to read. Well, listen to it on audio tape. But listen, if, if you were going to find out how many weeks off you got for vacation, I can assure you, you're going to read through the book. I know I did when I worked for the airlines. I want to know what my benefits were and how many days I can get off and how many times I can get overtime and, and, and you know, travel for free. So, you know, that's the thing. God is requiring rest. Listen, we have got to know what the Word of God says. That's how you are deceived. He comes as an angel of light. And so we, we must know what the word is saying because people are panicking all over. And I can venture to say a lot of people, and I'm talking about Christians right now, a lot really don't have a, a, um, a oneness with the word, a revelation of the word. You may know it mentally, but not have it in your heart. And, and I know areas that I'm weak in. I know it mentally, but I don't have it in my heart. And I work on that. And I worship and I med I love the word. The word is what sets you free. It says the revel in John chapter 8, it says the revelation of the truth of the word is what sets us free. So, all right. So I just mentioned that we're not to be critical or condemning, right? And we don't want to be suspicious, but we want to identify. And let's see, the Holy Spirit wants to give us strategies as well and how to address these situations. Even it could be, it's not necessarily just a person. It could be with your workplace or you sense, you know, you can walk in a place and sense a, 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 a crummy spirit or, or heaviness. You can, you can sense despair or hopelessness and you can feel that. We have the ability to pray and take authority over that. We don't have to submit to it. And I, I know a lot of times that with me, I would walk into a place, and I remember I was a couple of years ago, well, several years ago, I walked in church, into church, and um, I was perfectly fine when I walked in. When I got in there, there was just anger and bitterness, and I'm like, oh, I was perfectly fine. I'm thinking, what, what in the world happened? And, you know, and, and so a lot of times I would take that on myself and think I'm the one struggling with this. And the Lord said, well, there's people in here that you're picking up. Um, and they're, they're battling. And so and finally, it took me a little bit, but then I realized it and I went to the mic and I said, is there anyone here struggling? And sure, you know, a good amount of people came up for prayer. And I can venture to say that I feel that a lot of people that are dealing with emotional issues, issues are discerning things and you don't know how to handle it. And see, that's why you have to have communion with the Lord. You have to, uh, first of all, go to church. You need to be in a local church. Because there's, there's a corporate anointing that you don't get when you're alone. And, and you have that, that, you know, the ability for people to speak into your lives. You have to have your own personal time with the Lord, your own communion time with the Lord. And, um, and, and of course, meditating on the Word. That's how you increase in discernment. That's how you increase in your gifting, praying in the Spirit. That's, that's the way we, we all develop, not just discerning of spirits, all the gifts. The Lord wants us to all operate in whatever He has for us. He doesn't want it to be just four people praying for people. Listen, you're going to come across people, and I'm sure many of you already have, but he wants us to increase in this. And for those of you who never have, he wants us to pray for people. What does he say? Lay hands on the sick, right? Cast out devils, cleanse the leopard, and raise the dead. That's not just in church. We learn these things in church, but that's for the kingdom. That's for what we're supposed to be doing out there. 
So, and so God wants these gifts to be really developed in, you know, through us, okay? So a lot of times um, what happens is when you're operating in this gift, um, as I mentioned before, you, you, you can discern when you walk into a room or if you're talking with a person. And sometimes, again, it, it, you're not, let's say you're not even talking anything spiritual and you start to feel things. And you, you can feel really depressed all of a sudden. You can pick up, I, was, I remember one time I was at a meeting and, um, and I may have shared this here before, but it was with all major leaders. I mean, just major leaders. And I walked in the room, and this not just fear, panic tried to take, uh, overtake me. And the people I was with, I said, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm flying home. I was in another state. I said, I'm leaving. I'm not staying for this meeting. That's how this panic thing came on me. And so uh, somebody told me to go up front, and there was, they had a prayer team. This lady said to me, she goes, oh, you're just picking up what's in the room. I said, I am? <laughs> it's about 15, 20 years ago. And she prayed over me, and it left. It was fine. I didn't realize that. And a lot of times we can pick up, but we can, see, what happens is if we don't recognize that it's discerning of spirits, we'll take it on as our own. And uh, so I've learned to do that because a lot of times I'm like, wait a second. I was perfectly fine. Now all of a sudden I feel sad or I feel hopeless, and I'll, I'll look around and think, or I'll just pray. And sometimes you're just alone, and you're picking this stuff up, and you just start praying in the Spirit and ask, dialogue with Holy Spirit. Ask him, what is it? Why am I feeling this way? Are you having me pray for an individual? Sometimes I get an answer. Sometimes I don't. And what I'll do is just pray in the Spirit, and it will break. All right? So some practical advice. So sometimes what happens is you have an impression, as I just mentioned, or just an inward knowing. You know, my husband would say to me, well, how do you know this? I don't know. I just know. I, I don't know how I can tell you how it's happening. I just know what I know. And so he, gets, he can get a little upset because I can't articulate what I'm feeling sometimes. I just know something's off. I just know this is the way we have to do it. And it's been like that. So I've tested it. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. And it's usually right. Anyway, so you can smell spirits. All right, you can smell the angelic. You can smell the fragrance of the Lord. You know, many times I have smelled demons many, many, many times. You know, but see, just like we have five natural senses, we have five, we have our spiritual senses, okay? So you have that inward feeling, you know, the impressions you get, you know, uh, you have that, um, you can get direction, you have their sounds, right? So a lot of times you can talk with a person, you can hear what they're saying, you can listen to certain music and know that it's not God. There are music, there, I don't, you know, there's people that are, you know, saying it's Christian and, and it could be and just because it has something about the Bible in it, but it doesn't mean it has the Spirit of the Lord on it. So there's different ways. So you have impressions, you have smell, you have an inward knowing, sound. The Bible says taste and see. You know, if it's good, you can, you can discern, you know, just as what, whatever, you know, they're, just, they're, they're discussing with us or, you know, whatever's going on. The Lord, just pray that your senses are activated. And, um, you know, the Lord will give you direction. So we have to discipline ourselves in the Word so that this way we can exercise this gift within us, all right? It's really, really important. And discernment and faith work hand in hand. Discernment in the prophetic, words of knowledge. A lot of times when we're ministering in deliverance, the Lord gives us words of knowledge. And, um, you know, or, or and even we operate in the prophetic, but words of knowledge flow very strong with this and we can discern the spirit and a lot of times a person may think you know they're hurt over this thing and the spirit of the lord gives you the word of knowledge and you're discerning in the spirit realm what's the root system and bam you know that person gets set free and the person comes in for this one thing and here it was this thing had it not been for the spirit of the lord giving you discerning of spirits to address that issue so again it's it's really it always comes back down to in any gift that we have our relationship with Jesus, spending time with him every day. You know, the Lord told me, he says, get out your, your appointment or a pad. And he said, for 30 minutes, if, if you know, just write everything down. Um, you know, what would happen was I would get so distracted and I would think the moment I started praying, oh, I have to wash the dishes. I have to do this. I have to get my, you know, clothes ready and blah, blah, blah. He said, no, no, no. You make an appointment with me. You sit there for X amount of time. Initially, it was 30 minutes. And you don't move. And whatever thought comes your way, just write it down. Don't leave. And then you develop that habit in spending time with the Lord so that the enemy is pro at distracting all of us. 
And so, you know, have that intimate time, not looking at your phone, not looking to see if you have a text, not looking at any of that stuff. Just you and the Lord, you worship, have the Bible, and he'll show you each day what to do. You want to develop your gifts? This is the way. Discerning of spirits, whether it's gift of faith, whether it's a miracle gift, whatever, the revelatory gifts, it comes with us spending time with him because he wants every single one of us to have it. So... Uh, praying in tongues is another thing that it's really, really, really important for us to pray in tongues. If you don't pray in tongues, we're happy to pray with you. I'll pray um, before I close tonight. So discerning of spirits is really important for all of us. And um, I, to this day, I always ask Holy Spirit to help me to, to see clearly. I don't just assume I know just because I've operated in it before. But I always ask him to help me to discern clearly, operate through his eyes and operate through his love. And that, that it's not done in a, in a way that's harsh or if I have to confront the situation, but that always coming from love and compassion because that's what Jesus did. So I'm going to pray. Let's see what time it is. I'm going to pray. And I am going to um, just see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. But I also... You know, if you're if you're if you have never a operated in this gift, just lay hands on your heart because I'm going to pray that you're activated in it. But also, even if you have uh, operated in this gift, that that you will continue, that you won't be overwhelmed, that you won't be discouraged. If you're you know, you'll miss it a lot of times initially, but then you start practicing and you see. Okay, this time I heard. This time I was off. But but the more you practice, it's like with anything. You're going to make mistakes. But don't be afraid. But just remember, the most important thing is always come from us, uh, love, you know, because love confronts. When you, when you, you know, we have, we, it, we're accountable when we see something in an individual and the Lord's allowing us to see. It's not to put them down or to harm them or to hurt them, but it's to approach that individual so that they can get healed. And even in your own household, discern what spirits in your house. You can do that. Doesn't mean you have one, but just in case you do, you can. So, you know, we don't, I don't want you to think there's a spirit under every rock because there isn't. But when there is one, you need to discern it. So, Lord, I just thank you that for the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us your spirit, Holy Spirit within us, to, to just activate all these gifts. And so, Lord, I just pray for each and every one that's listening, for everybody that's here tonight, Father, that you activate the gifts within us, Father, discerning of spirits, O oh God, that you activate words of knowledge, Father, words of wisdom, that we're not afraid to step out, O oh Lord, because, Lord, you've given it to every single one of us, Lord, and you want that gift uh, established. So, Father, I just thank you for that. And, Lord, I just thank you for um, each and every person that's listening, but I just really felt like, tonight as I was speaking that if some of you were battling with any kind of sadness or disappointment, I just want to pray because I just kept feeling that in my spirit. So Lord, I just take authority over any sadness or sorrow somebody may be battling with tonight. And Lord, I just bind that in Jesus' name and I lose your joy, I lose your strength because your word says that um, where there's joy, you know, there, <clears throat> excuse me, there's strength, your strength. And so the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so, Lord, I just thank you that, that you're a God of all hope and comfort and that, you know, for whatever you're feeling, if you're struggling with that disappointment and hopelessness, just know that God always has a plan. And, and a lot of times, and, and I quoted this on Sunday in Romans chapter 4, you know, it says that Abraham hoped against hope and he called those things which be not as though they are. Don't look at just what you're seeing. Get a word from the Lord. Just, just say, Lord, I'm calling those things. I'm, I'm asking you to shift things around and that, um, you know, give me your perspective. A lot of times we pray only with our perspective, but ask Holy Spirit for his perspective so that you know how to move forward and you know how to pray. So I just want to encourage you with that. So um, I'm just grateful that I had this opportunity to share. I pray it helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. But uh, Lord, I just bless each and every person here this night. And I thank you, Father, for, for stirring the gifts up within us, for fanning that flame, oh God. And that, Lord, for all of us, you want us all, for those of us who've been operating this, you want us to, to come up to a whole nother level. So we say yes to that, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.